You're listening to the audio portion of Workshop Wednesdays. Workshop Wednesdays is a free live discussion about topics affecting accountants, bookkeepers, and business owners. You can join the ABO group in Facebook to participate live Wednesdays at 10 a.m. Pacific Time. Just search for ABBO in Facebook. This podcast is brought to you by SchoolofBookkeeping.com, where you will learn, grow, and build a thriving bookkeeping practice. We have hundreds of lessons with almost every aspect of the industry. Start your free month today at schoolofbookkeeping.com. Well, welcome to another Workshop Wednesday brought to you by schoolofbookkeeping.com where it's casual conversations for serious workflows. And uh, here we are with, uh, wait, wait, where's my name? How are people going to know who I am? What happened there? I don't know. I don't see my name popping up either. Yeah, what, what did happened you do there? again? What, uh, <laughs> what happened? I'm Dan DeLong. And I'm Rachel Douchy. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. Okay, so what did all... you do? It must be all your fault. And you didn't go into Do Not Disturb because I heard the ding. Oh, shoot. I need to do that right now. I did put my name in. It prompted me to type it in. Yeah, mine did too. I, there's technology updates. Yeah. <laughs> so we've been, we've been on a sabbatical hiatus for a couple weeks and uh, yeah and you more. have something new <laughs> besides <Goatee>. my goatee <laughs> a serious goatee for serious yeah. workflows yeah. that's right that's right <laughs> and, uh, it probably won't last long because it's getting annoying but <laughs> it was a nice try right? so yeah maybe that's the uh, that's the topic that we should have in the chat should dan keep the stage <laughs> Let's do it. I, I already know your vote. Uh, no. <laughs> Forget. <laughs> but we have a couple of announcements that we want to share, and then we'll, we'll jump into today's topic, which is all about making mass edits in QuickBooks Online with Spreadsheet C. <laughs> I love every topic. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> now, if we could make at mass, mass edits with Spreadsheet Sync and PayPal, man, you would just be oh. over the moon. I know. And Jamie says, keep it. So she likes one it. vote for, one vote against. <laughs> so a couple of announcements. There's been some changes with, with the QuickBooks solution provider program and those types of things. And so we wanted to talk a little bit about addressing some of those changes and we had a soft launch with this program. We're trying to test it out with School of Bookkeeping. Um, but what we're trying to do is we're trying to bundle uh, online subscriptions with School of Bookkeeping, right? So it's like a companion to your QuickBooks Online. And one of the things about Simple Start is that's getting, I don't know, the redheaded stepchild treatment with, <laughs> we're not quite sure. Sometimes you go to QuickBooks's website and you see Simple Start's not even there. Yeah, they're doing like A/B testing to see maybe Essentials might be the baseline version of, version of QuickBooks Online. And there's some reasons for Simple Start for a company that's very simple, <laughs> as the name as the yeah, name they implies, start. or they're starting right. <laughs> Those two words could set, could essentially make it necessary, but there's some things that go along with that, especially accountants, right? If you're creating a simple start company for your client, there's only one user. If you log in first, that, that can pose a, a, a bit of a challenge when it comes to making your client or granting your client access to simple start. So we have. We have an option here at School of Bookkeeping where you can bundle QuickBooks Online with School of Bookkeeping, like a two for one type of thing. Cause we all like BOGOs, don't we? Mm -hmm. So we have, where is it? There we go. So there's a, a, a QR code here for two for one to take to our website where you can see how you can bundle uh, a QuickBooks Online subscription with your School of Bookkeeping. So you get the two for one, basically you're saying, 
paying the same price that you would through QuickBooks directly, but you are actually getting the online tutorials and the services that, that uh, School of Bookkeeping can offer as part of that. Now, if you're an accounting professional and you want to do this for your clients, you can sign up as an affiliate of School of Bookkeeping and earn a commission for live, for active subscription. So that's another way of in including your, your revenue stream or increasing your revenue stream as a, as an accountant, accounting professional. It's not just simple start, it's also advanced, right? So if you have a client with, with advanced, you can bundle in the elite membership of School of Bookkeeping get the quick answers and you and your team love quick answers, right? Uh, yeah, or Rachel. love it. <laughs> I've learned so much from quick answers that I don't need to use it anymore. No, I'm there you go. Um, but one thing I was going to say though, is simple start is actually really great. Sometimes people don't need all the bells and whistles. Yeah. And a lot of times, like for our clients, we're doing a lot of stuff outside of QuickBooks and simple start is perfect. So we do stuff yeah. outside of QuickBooks, dump it right in, and it's great. But we have several clients that are in that situation. And the, this is a little bit different than the like the wholesale billing or the uh, pro advisor preferred pricing. I think is now what they what yeah. Intuit is calling it, where where you typically have to have it under your you know under your QBOA, and you're the accountant. By doing it this way. Um, we're just managing the billing and we're not even a user in inside of your QuickBooks. All, all, all yeah, because I think you people. said if, say, for instance, we're affiliated to the QSP, it doesn't, Simple Start doesn't count, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so this would be a way to get some kickback for that. Exactly. Yeah. They removed any kind of referral or bounty out of the QuickBooks solution provider channel. So this is a way to do both, right? And there's no additional cost to your to you or your client because it's just the same bundled price, right? So we just yep. do it that way. So that's that's that. And if you wanted to, I'm going to put the QR code in the upper right. If you wanted to set up a, a free trial for a School of Bookkeeping, because what we're going to be talking about today is is in our course catalog of the QuickBooks Online Advanced module that we have, or we have a sub-module of Spreadsheet Sync. We've tried to curate all of the resources that are out there for Spreadsheet Sync and put them in one place. Um, but if you wanna be able to see said module, you need to be a member of School of Bookkeeping in order to do that. So you can check it out, do a trial if you want, and, uh, and, and we'll have all the, all these resources here that we're going to be talking about today. I'm going to share my screen here real quick. Here we go. Yeah. So here's our module of, of spreadsheet sync already there in the QuickBooks online advanced module. And it's got all the things that we want to do as far as getting started, how to any kind of uh, FAQs or troubleshooting, it's all right there. So you don't have to go scouring the internet. We've done it for you. <laughs> in, and, and we've talked about Spreadsheet Sync before in, in, their, in our workshop listings. You can go and, and check out those, those workshops as well. But we can't, uh, a couple quick answers uh, came in and we wanted to talk about a unique use case for spreadsheet sync. And that's one of the advantages I think of spreadsheet sync is that not only does it allow you to, to modify transactions in bulk, it also allows you to modify list elements. So we had a couple people come in and, and say, Hey, it's the end of the year. My, my, the CPA said. They're tracking inventory and they don't need to be. So we've got all of these inventory items and we want to turn them into non-inventory items so that we can bring up sales, but not count, not account for them as inventory. We're just gonna, we're just gonna manage these processes outside of this whole thing. So 
how do I change all of my inventory items into non-inventory items? That's a painstaking process because the way inventory is running inside of QuickBooks, you can't just turn an item into a non-inventory part. All right. So, really cannot. so, uh, so it's, it's one of those thou shalt not do <laughs> the 11th, the 11th commandment. You can, it's a one way ticket to inventory. <laughs> You can turn something into an inventory item, but you can't turn it back, right? And also I'm, oh, well, I'm okay, never mind. I was just going to say, sometimes I also question like when CPAs tell, tell people they don't need to be, they don't need to have inventory on in QBO because they are trying to help them simplify. But sometimes I question that, but that's okay. All right. <laughs> All right. So I've already uh, established and, and created a uh, connection. This is my cell here. Wait a second. I got to put on my glasses. I can't see any. Oh, I've got the mag. I, I can zoom in here. I can't zoom in on this side, but here we go. Oh, and you know, I just made my screen bigger too. So, okay. I can okay. see it. Yeah. Full screen for today is probably what we'll, <laughs> what we'll need here. So it's a sidebar of what I've already connected prior to this. If you want to, if you have questions on connecting, you can see those topics in our course Just library. really quick though, um, one quick question on connecting. Um, does it only work for Excel or Google Sheets too? They are connecting to Google Sheets. I haven't played around with that, but I, I did hear that's a that's an update lately with they'll be able to have this at task pane or mm -hmm. something of a connection with Google Sheets as well. But it you can only connect it from an advanced company. Yes. And once it's connected, if you have an account, if you're an accountant with, you know, clients with multiple other flavors, you can use it for reporting purposes on non-advanced clients, but you do need to launch it and initially connect it from an advanced company first. But you can't do this create or edit records, which is what we're going to be talking about here today. All right. So these are the things, these are the lists that you're able to transactions and lists that you're able to, to modify, right? So invoices and bills, journal entries, uh, purchase and sales receipts, which I wish they would keep the, the terminology consistent, but purchase is expenses. Bills. Uh, yeah. Uh, not bills because oh. bills are up here. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I'm blind. I can't see anything. Right. Vendors and customers, your chart of accounts, inventory items, which, which we'll jump into, but even though it says inventory items, that's all your items. So your products and services list. So if you have services, if you have. Yeah, you're right. They're not consistent with the terminology. That's right. really weird. Time activities, classes. I have to get my glasses. <laughs> Go. Troubling. Struggle is real for Rachel, <laughs> um, but classes and departments and the departments is locations. It's just another terminology and difference between the two. So lo locations and class tracking estimates, employees and purchase orders. So all of those lists and transactions can be modified or just brought in. So that, that's one option of either syncing information that's already in QuickBooks or Maybe if you have it already in Excel somewhere else and you want to bring in those transactions, you can do that here. Mm -hmm. So we're going to uh, take a look at inventory. And this is where you can have this, you have this choice. Uh, do I want to add new records to QuickBooks or edit records and sync back? Or are you just going to talk about this use case, right? Of I want to change all of my inventory items to non-inventory items first, but, or but the caveat to all of that is I want to use the same item name. So rather than creating a whole slew of new items that are different names, which would be a disruption to the workflows that are already set up of, Hey, if I want to bring up, create an invoice or a sales receipt or a bill, I usually have this item number that I look things up. I want to use the same item name or number to do that. Right. So I'm going to hit get template and what it's doing is it's going out into my QuickBooks 
and grabbing my item list, right? So tiny, sorry. Let me make a little big. I can't even see that even with the glasses. <laughs> All right, so this is the, the item list that's in my QuickBooks. So if I go over here, this Ooh, is... This, do they have a convenience the, store? I'm saying candy bars, nuts, and t-shirts. Yeah, this was... This was uh, I, don't, I don't know how these items got in here. This was... <laughs> when I worked it into it, I, I think I imported an item list into this. Uh, but yeah, there's a Three Musketeers king-size candy bar, some beach mint gum, and a misspelled... Paper, peppermint. This is kaffir, peppermint strawberry. Uh, we won't talk about my spelling. We'll talk, in, <laughs> right? So here is all of the, the fields that you have to work with, right? So this type, and again, terminology difference. So we've got in this drop down, we've got. Look, if I click on it, stock, non-stock, and service items. So there's your inventory, non-inventory, and service-based. So is this not going to confuse <laughs> you, quick, quick book users and business owners? I can't even understand why they would call this stock non-stock. But I would get confused. It's yes, it is certainly a challenge. <laughs> and is code skew? What's that? Is code uh, skew? Yes. Oh my gosh. Here. Nope. Let's see here. What do we got? Let's just stock add. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that would be the that would be the SKU number. So let's, oh my let's see if gosh. I got anything here. The nice part about this coming in to to Excel is you have the functionalities of Excel, right? So every column yeah, is gonna that. have a filter, right? So yes, so there is some numbers in there. So if I remove the blanks and apply that, now I only have all the items here that have a skew in it but to me this is like they got like some engineering team from australia to do it yeah and they're using their terminology that, <laughs> like doesn't... yes that's the history of spread teach sync is that they did acquire a company oh, that, makes uh, sense. That, yep. that had that and they were not from the u.s they had some u.s non-u.s uh, terminologies say, that made it looks foreign Mm -hmm. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I'm just, you get what I'm saying. Exactly. So let's use this use case of, hey, we're going to, we're going to change. We're going to, well, first, we're going to change the names. Oh, they have biatch mint. That's watermelon. <laughs> I'm sorry. sorry. We have a watermelon. Yeah. And a sweet mint. I'm glad you've got sweet mint. Not talk about the. But this is how you could clean this up too. Thank you. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm good. All right. So first thing we want to do is we want to get all of the names of the inventory items out of the way, right? Easiest way to do that is by adding a one to the name of the item. So first we're going to do is uh, filter our item list here for just the inventory items because we don't want to deal with anything that's not a non-inventory item. So all of our, everything here says stock. So at least now that we know stock means inventory, we have, oh, I, should, I guess I should, should use Excel. There is 229 items here that we're working with. Okay. Right. So the first thing I want to do is copy the name column and I'm going to create a new sheet, which is the sheet already here. And I'm just going to paste that name column in here. Get rid of this guy. And get rid of this guy. All right. And I'm just going to call this. Let's make the column wide enough. And we'll call this new name. And the easiest way to add a one is just to do this. And then use the ampersand. All right, so now it's taken that name and just added a one at the end of it. Copy this down. Here we go. All of those names are now added and appended with a one. Cool. Now, great. Um, control shift down. All right, I've, I've selected them all. I'll copy this. 
Go back to my template. And well, let's make this wide enough so we can see the magic. Oh, darn it. Undo. You got to paste values. Oh, now. yeah. There you go. So paste the values. So now all of our names have the one. Have the one in it. So then, in order to post and synchronize things back to QuickBooks here, we have to just change this post column to yes. Now let's make sure I'm at the top. Get it. Come on now. Oh. Hmm. Get away. Maybe oh. it's because you're hiding some things. You have some rows hidden. Maybe it won't do no, it. It's let's see here. It's probably a view issue. Just there. Oh, well, there you go. All right. Make that yes. Make this bigger so we can see. And then using my key mouse techniques, you hover over the corner. It turns into that. A little plus sign. I can just double click on it. Now all my yeses are copied down to the bottom. There we go. All of our items. And then I just click this sync to QuickBooks. And wait. <laughs> it's it's going through and modifying those item names to add the one on it. I don't know what happened to you. X didn't get a one. Or the these last three. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. Any hoodles. So we got name supplied already exists. So one item didn't sync back because it already had a one on it. Because I was testing this beforehand. So it probably got, it was probably a, 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 stra a straggler. Mm. Right. So looking at my item list, oh no, it doesn't. It didn't modify anything, however. Did you re refresh? I, I have to refresh, right? So I'm going to just use all inventory, which should redo everything. Now all of my items yeah. have a one on, right? No. I, I <laughs> right did quiet mode. Your, your daughter's you not on bypass, okay. right? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, you, you let your family come through. All right, so if I wanted to create these new items as non-inventory items, so let's copy these names back. Back in here. I got a non-stock item. No, I don't know. I didn't play with it. Whoops. All right, I can't click in. Oh, I did service. Darn it. Nonstop. There we go. These are non stock items. Now, I'm not sure about this part of things with the inventory asset being selected in here. We might need to blank it out or, or things like that. But let's sync it back and see if it creates these items as non-inventory items. But question. Yeah. Don't they need to be zero? Shouldn't, it shouldn't need to be because it should create those. I, this is my theory. It, <laughs> okay. shouldn't, it shouldn't need to be because it will create those items as non-inventory parts, which it didn't like that. Uh, but I, wouldn't you think that they still need to be zeroed out because there's a value in inventory? It's doing this. Uh, it, it errored out on every item. Yeah. Because these items have a have a link back to it. So you would, in this case, you would hit done and cl and clear it out. Maybe copy these. Uh, this this sheet so for purposes of copying them back in. And then instead of syncing, you would go back to home and then clear the data and go into your inventory items with a add new, right? So you would just be adding new, bringing in 
those items column by column, whatever it is I that see. you want to do. So you're just so basically can... copying them, bringing them in, and then you're going to then get. I don't see how you're bypassing the zeroing out the quantity. You're creating brand new items, all, and then all you're brand going new. To zero out and delete the old. Zeroing out is that that's another thing, right? So you're zeroing it out. You're going to zero out the quantities by doing a, a quantity adjustment in here. Yeah. But that's zeroing it out. But just to zero out your inventory, that's a QuickBooks thing, right? This is what this is doing is allowing you to move the item name out of the way so that you can bring in and create new items. Uh, okay. From, I got it. Right? It's kind of a different thing I'm asking about. Yeah. Okay. But zeroing it out, if you wanted to zero it out, you certainly could, but you would do it that way. So back to bridge sync. Let me go home here. Let's go through some of the things that you can and can't do with regards to other lists. So vendors and customers, we were talking about this right before. You might get excited when you see your customers. Where are they? Oh, is it still thinky? Hmm. Where are my customers? Let me try that again. That was looky. I look away for a second. <laughs> All right. And new records. Oh, I didn't choose that. That's. Uh, Go and not edit. Yeah. So on your customer list, you see this. Yeah, make that bigger because I want to see if it has the parrot that it I does. was talking about when you yes. got to it. So this list type here where you see this customer project, people get excited when they see, oh, well, I could just turn this guy into a project. No. It doesn't work. Yeah, I've tried. If, if I try to say yes and sync it back, it will give an error saying, oh, no, you can't. That, I also have to support. I have to tell you, I like how this exports customers because I was talking about before when we were talking about this is that if you go to X, just export into Excel, like using the export tool and you download and you export customers out of Excel, it gives you this list, but you don't have list type, customer project, customer project, customer project. It all says customer. Even the projects, it says customer. And the only way you know it's a project is if there's something in the parent column that says yeah. what the actual project name is. Right here. You and you know that's actually a project. It's very it. cryptic. Yeah, you've got a column here for parent customer. Yeah, and that's how you know that the thing is a project. In here, in if you go back to the left, you can see in that column, list type says if it's a customer or if it's a project, which is crystal clear. But when you use that export tool, it doesn't differentiate. It's all customer. It's confusing. Yeah. So here's the, the columns that you do have. You have the list type the display name, title, and then just some of the general information about the customer or the vendor. That's one thing to keep in mind though, is that you're, when you do this, even though it says customer templates, your vendors are part of this too. So you've got your list type here. You've got vendors yeah. as well. I don't know why you would have blanks, but that's another story. So if you, if I just wanted to look at my vendors, there's all the vendors that I have in that company. And then. So you have some general information about them with notes, tax identifier, VAT tax, telephone number. It, clearly it was outside of the U.S. with the VAT number. I love your fake addresses. <laughs> Blowing. <laughs> yep. So that's one thing that it won't do is it won't, for customers, it won't support shipping addresses, right? So it's mm. only got one place for one address and that's it. 
down here and we'll go home. Look at that. Then you can do that with employees, right? I've got employees on play. I got some, I got a few in there. Two. Mm. Right. So you, there's your things that you can do inside of there. It doesn't have all of that. So that the only thing I think extra is that hire date and release date of birth, right? So those are fields that are specific to employees, but you're not going to see like social security numbers or pay information or those types of things to, to modify that and, and synchronize that back and forth. The advantage of spreadsheet sync, right, is because it's an Intuit product, right? They're going to have potentially uh, a leg up on some of the things that they're going to allow for an application to integrate back in back and forth into QuickBooks. Other, other third-party applications like Sassant or Sassant, which whatever the pronounced <laughs> pronunciation <laughs> is. Sassant, I've heard, I, I've heard it all. <laughs> transaction on board. There's other ones too. There's other that I would have or all cool. of the. All of those guys have to play by the API rules. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so custom fields and those types of things are, that are yeah. relegated and, for maybe you can't touch them. Um, yeah. Or, and the one thing that that's box. cool, even with a product that syncs like this, is that you no longer, and we've all done this, you no longer have to do things one by one. I think we all can say, a pain it takes yeah, time really. and it's annoying yeah. yeah that was always a big thing one of the things that i really liked about desktop is there's a there's an option in there in in quickbooks desktop called add edit multiple list items mm. and for customers and vendors and and items uh, you can do a lot of batch editing as a as an example if you wanted to change the, the revenue account of multiple items instead of one at a time. Yes. You could go in there and change that in bulk. And when I first saw spreadsheet sync, I'm like, oh, finally, yes. <laughs> this is an option that can do that. And other applications do allow you to do that, right? So you can do some live editing where you sync it out from QuickBooks make your changes and then push it back in. The advantage of the spreadsheet sync is because it's in under the Intuit umbrella, yeah. they might start to allow it to do things that other applications can't. Yes. But the caveat comes, oh, you got to be on QuickBooks online advanced yes. to do that. So right. for, for all of your clients that are in plus and simple start and essentials, their SOL when it comes to being able to do yeah. that outside of QuickBooks. And then you have to look at something else that might be able yeah. to do that. But this is a nice way because it's already bundled in to check it out, but just keeping in mind that, yeah, it's not, it's not the Messiah <laughs> of changing batch editing and Multiple yeah, impact. I I would say like my vote would be what one of the first things they add is being able to add projects and change customers' projects mm -hmm. or change invoices, historical invoices to the project. If anyone else is, if anyone is going to be able to do it, it's going to be spreadsheet sync first because they have that inside yeah. option to be able yeah, to yeah. do there, and yeah. they may be able to give an exception to that. Yeah. Uh, this is what, like one of those things that when you're in the fold of, of an Intuit suite of services, you tend to get a little bit more integration than you do when you piece things together. Yeah, with other, that's other really good insight. Yeah, you'd know. <laughs> when you get, like when you have QBO payroll inside of your QuickBooks, then you have a, a lot more deeper integration than yeah. if you're using Gusto, for example, yeah. right? So the, the way those transactions come over, the reports that you can run, the things like that, uh, 
QuickBooks Payments is another example of things that it can do that others can't, or you yeah. have to build automations to be able to simulate that. Yeah. So that's what we want to talk about here today with, with the spreadsheet sync. In the comments, if you're watching this later, what would be a use case that you could see for, for spreadsheet sync? And yeah, we'll see I'd like if... to know what, what anybody else might want to do. Cause man, I love this type of syncing tool. Yeah. So I'm going to stop sharing here. And of course oh. we get huge. I, I why does it? Oh, no. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. I'm always clicking the wrong buttons here. Trying to just, it does that all the time. Every time I stop sharing, whoever is first on the list becomes huge. And then I have to try to figure out how to get us this, get us on the same level. <laughs> Any closing thoughts, Rachel? No, I love it. I, and it's any, anybody that has QBOA, QBO accountant, <laughs> not QBOA right. advanced. I love that those are two, both QBOA. But if we, if you're, you have QBOA accountant, you have QBOA advanced, try using it and get familiar with it. And I know I am, I'm one of those people that I've been using an external tool, but I would definitely want to try using spreadsheet seek more. I really do. Yeah. I always try it first and then am sorely disappointed and then end up going to another tool. When it does have its specific uses and it does work pretty well, it's a great tool to utilize when it fits the bill, right? And, and the promise of Spreadsheet Sync is that it could prob potentially do more than, than other tools that allow it to do. But yeah. sometimes it's, this is one of those things where sometimes they got to catch up. They got to catch up to the norm before sprinting past them. And I think this will potentially be that. Cool. Yeah. And I'm sure they probably depend on collaboration with a lot of us accountants to see like what might be needed and what's the best way to use it. What do you need the most and things like that. I'm like wanting to convert everything to projects because I think the most powerful thing about QBO, as Hector Garcia always says, is the bank feeds. It is the most powerful thing. And so I want to be able to assign everything to a project out of the bank feed. Mm -hmm. And with my firm, with a lot of my clients, we're transitioning them to that too. So we can provide job costing and that kind of thing. So I'm really into it. All right. So next week, we're actually going to talk a little bit about uh, desktop because there are some new-ish features inside of QuickBooks desktop that oh, we're going yeah. to talk about. But one of them, you're going to love the inventory turnover report. Oh. <laughs> so if we could do inventory turnover with uh, mass editing and, and yeah. PayPal, and fun fact, just, your head would explode. Yes. <laughs> so my semester, well, term, we call them terms, starts today and one of my classes is advanced reporting. So I, and they don't teach us in QuickBooks. They teach us in Excel. Like here's how to do everything the long way, the slow old fashioned way in Excel. So this is perfect because I can take some of this learning and tweak it so I can maybe do it inside QuickBooks. There we go. All right. So we'll see you next time on the Workshop Wednesday and we hope everyone has a great day. And that wraps up another insightful episode of Workshop Wednesday, brought to you by SchoolofBookkeeping.com. We hope you enjoyed today's discussion and took away some valuable tips and strategies to enhance your bookkeeping practice. Remember, if you want to stay ahead in the world of bookkeeping and accounting, be sure to visit SchoolofBookkeeping.com. With a wide range of courses, resources, and expert guidance, you'll find everything you need to sharpen your skills and boost your career. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast on your favorite platform so you never miss an episode. And if you enjoyed today's show, please take a moment to leave us a review on your podcast platform of choice. 
Your reviews help us reach more listeners and continue to bring you the best content every week. If you have questions or topics you'd like us to cover, reach out to us on social media or send us an email at support at schoolofbookkeeping.com. We love hearing from our listeners and are always looking for new ideas to explore. Thanks for tuning in to Workshop Wednesday. Until next time, keep learning, keep growing, and keep excelling in your bookkeeping journey. I'm Dan DeLong, and we'll see you next week.